In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up your games list in PPSSPP for Xbox Series X and S. All right, my fellow emulation fans, today we are going to be covering the standalone version of PPSSPP for Xbox Series X and S. PPSSPP is a very well-made emulator and works great in a standalone environment, fixing some graphical glitches that can appear in RetroArch. So this build of PPSSPP for Xbox Series X and S comes to us courtesy of Basharast. So let's go ahead and get it installed. Now, as we get started, there are a couple of things you're gonna need to do before trying to run PSP games on your Xbox Series X and S, the first of which is being in dev mode. So if you have not activated dev mode on your Xbox Series X or S, I'm gonna refer you over to my RetroArch setup guide for getting that all set up and activated so we don't have to artificially inflate the length of this video. So the link to this guide will be in the description below, as well as my entire emulation on Xbox Series X and S playlist. The second thing you are going to need is a USB drive formatted into NTFS with proper security permissions set. One method of doing so is covered in my RetroArch setup guide, but an easier method is in one of my USB drive setup guides here. So if you have Windows or Mac, got one for both of you, links in the description below. This is not an optional step. The next thing we're going to need is PPSSPP for UWP from Basharast. So link in the description below to this GitHub page where you can easily download it. You just click here to download. Once the download has completed, just go ahead and get it extracted. It's in zip format, so you can use pretty much anything to get it going. So there we go. Once extracted, you'll have your PPSSPP AppX, as well as the required dependencies. So now just go ahead and get booted up into your Xbox device portal. So just as a quick refresher, when you're booted up into dev mode on the dashboard and you're connected to a network, you'll see your remote access IP address. So just type that into your web browser. But once you've booted up into your Xbox device portal, just go under my games and apps, click on add. And now you could drag the AppX bundle or just choose file. Select PPSSPP gold.appx. Now click next and choose the dependency file that we need. And again, it's in that dependencies folder. So just go ahead and select it and then click start to begin the install process. And done. We are now done with the Xbox device portal. So you can go ahead and close out of this. Now with PPSSPP installed, there is one more thing we need to do to get it to run optimally. So just head on down to the new PPSSPP gold entry on your Xbox, press the back button, go down to view details, and change its UWP type from app to game. This will give you all the power your Series X and S has to offer. And I always like to do a restart after this. You don't really need to probably, but I mean, it's quick anyway, so why not? I don't care. <laughs> and with the reboot complete, it is now ready to go. From here, go ahead and get your Xbox USB drive plugged into your PC. We're gonna do a bit of initial setup. So just gonna open up mine here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a PPSSPP system folder. So that way all of our save games and things like that go into USB instead of on the internal drive. That way, if anything ever happens to get deleted, you aren't going to lose all of your precious data. So just create a new folder and name it PPSSPP or something. It doesn't really matter what you name it, but I mean, name it something so you know what it is. And there we go. Next, we are going to need to source some PSP games. I unfortunately haven't made a tutorial on how to back up your own yet. It's actually really easy with the hacked PSP, but yeah, I need to make a video about that. But anyway, once you source PSP games, they can be in ISO or CSO format, doesn't really matter. I have mine in CSO currently. But you just need to store these wherever the heck you want on your USB drive. It doesn't matter where they go. So I just make a games folder and put all of my games in it. So as you can see, my PSP games are already here. So we're not gonna wait on file transfers just to put the same games back on. Again, they can go anywhere you want on your USB drive, just drag them in. But once you have your PPSSPP folder made and your games on your USB drive, you can go ahead and close out of it and move it back over to your Xbox. 
With your USB drive in place, make sure if this is the first time you have put it in your Xbox, you choose to format it as media storage. That way it doesn't delete anything that you've just put on it. But we are ready to begin, so go ahead and get booted up into PPSSPP Gold. Now it is time to begin our initial setup, so choose where to keep PSP data. So go down to create or choose a PSP folder, select that, then select OK and press A. Now navigate down to the USB icon you have here and choose your PPSSPP folder. And now click on select. Now it'll show you the selected folder as well as the remaining space that it has. So there we go. If that looks correct, go ahead and press OK. And this will bring you to the PPSSPP home screen. And you'll see that it looks kind of confusing at first, but that's all right. So make sure that you are in the games tab that you didn't accidentally press A on recent or go into the homebrews menu. Just press A on the games tab up here. And we're going to navigate to our games directory and get it pinned so that way you can find all your games with ease. So just press this up arrow and we're going to press that quite a few times until we get to the root of our storage. All right, now you're going to go ahead and select your USB drive. So this will be E if you're on dev mode, D if you're in retail. But once you're in your USB drive, just navigate to where you have your games stored. So again, for my demo, I put them in games and then PSP games. So there we go. Now all my games are showing up, but there's one more step that is very important that you don't want to forget. Go down here and press A on this button right here. Now it'll pin it so that way every time you come in, your PSP games will show. And if you were to exit out of PPSSPP, your games are gonna show. But now you can just go ahead and select a game and it'll boot up. And there we go, PSP games playable on our Xbox Series X and S with relative ease. Now, just for some quick info that you'll probably be interested in, there's a number of hotkeys built into PPSSPP by default. So for example, if you hold down your right trigger, you'll enter a fast forward mode. And pressing your left trigger will take you to the in-game menu where you could create save states and adjust other options or exit back out to the menu so you can continue loading up different games. But speaking of settings real quick, the Xbox Series X and S are powerful enough that if you want to change your rendering resolution up to a full 4K, you could do so without any real negatives for PSP emulation. The GPUs in these systems are more than powerful enough to handle 4K PSP games for the most part. If you run into one that does cause lag, just lower it back down. But some other settings I like to enable here is V-Sync so we don't have any screen tearing, as well as rendering duplicate frames in 60 hertz. That way, uh, 30 FPS games look a little bit smoother. You can also mess with hardware tessellation if you want, but then you can also upscale your textures using a bunch of different methods available. So XBRZ, hybrid by cubic, and hybrid by cubic. So these are all personal preference. But once you choose your type, you'll need to enable the upscaling so you could go up to 5X. It's all personal preference on how you think it looks to yourself. But remember, if you turn on an upscaling, Make sure that you turn on Deposterize to get rid of any interesting seams or banding that can occur. Next, we can enable some texture filtering. So I usually set this to auto max quality. And then the last information down here, we got FPS and speed counters. So if you're interested in seeing how fast your games are actually running and if the emulation speed is accurate, you can enable these. It's a great way to tell if you're getting any slowdown from any of your settings. Next in the control tab, if you go into control mapping, you can set any number of controls and hotkeys as you desire. I'm not really going to go in depth on this one, but you can see that there are a number of different options available for you. You could also calibrate your analog stick if desired, so such as dead zones. I 
don't like dead zones, so I turn these off. Don't really need to mess with anything in the audio tab. And as for networking, I'm hoping to make a dedicated video on this because it's a bit more in depth than I want for this video. Tools lets you manage your save data, save states, system, you can change language and different transparency effects and things like that. Choose your memory stick folder and sizes if desired. Shouldn't really need to change a whole lot in here, but memory stick size might be interest of you if you're doing a lot of DLC. But now when you load up into a PSP game, you can see all of your settings have taken effect. So here we go, full 4K, Final Fantasy VII, Crisis Core, and our hybrid by Cubic Upscaling. I'm not a really big fan of this look, so I mean, I could just head into settings and change it at will, which is great. So I mean, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that. I really don't like that. All right, so there we go, back over to XBZR. And I'm not really a big fan of that one either, so you know what, let's just go ahead and turn it off. Not really needed, so whatever. And there we go. I like the sharp pixels anyway, so it works out for me. But there you have it, PPSSPP set up on your Xbox Series X and S for you to enjoy all of your PSP games with ease. As always, thank you all so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your PSP games set up and running to your desires. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every single one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our incredible backers. You are just the greatest champions and we just could never keep doing this without you. So thank you so much for keeping us going for so long. Again, you're all incredible. Never forget it. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.